Stephen Horahan here at BrandmasterAcademy.com and in this video you're going to learn some time management techniques that I've learned in my freelance and creative career that you can take into your business so you can start getting more stuff done and moving the needle in your business. Now time management is something that most people struggle with, certainly freelancers and entrepreneurs working for themselves because they have to be self-disciplined. Now me personally, I work in waves and there are times that I go through where I'm extremely productive and then there are times when the wave comes down and I'm not productive at all. But I've learned over the years a few techniques to extend that time, ex extend those waves of productivity so I'm more productive for more of the time and when I do have those pitfalls that I quickly recover and I get back on track. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video, some techniques that I've learned over the years that I've used to increase my productivity and get more stuff done. Number one, time block everything. Now, depending on how bad you are at time management will depend on how long you're able to time block into the future. You might be able to just time block for a day or you might be able to time block out a month or a quarter in advance. Me personally, I do it on a week by week basis and then on a day by day basis. So I sit down at the start of the week and I time block all of my tasks for that week. And I actually have a template that I use every single week. Now, not every single week is the same. So at the start of the week, I'll adjust that template and I'll adjust it for the upcoming week. And then every day I'll have a look at those time blocks again, just to make sure that I'm on track and I know what's ahead of me. Number two, use productivity software. Now, you don't have to go out and spend money on software. There are free softwares out there, or you could just use your calendar if you wanted. Me personally, I use Trello, and I've been using Trello for a long, long time now. I really like it because it can make your tasks visual. And you know, given that I've got a creative background, I am a visual person, and if I'm able to see my tasks in these blocks, then I know what's ahead of me. And that helps me to organize my my day and my week in my head. And if I if I if I am organized in my head, then you know the voices are not going to be as loud and I'm going to be able to get stuff done because you know I know what I'm getting done this week. So if you do have a budget for a software, you can go out and buy more expensive software. But to be honest, you don't really need it. I've been using the free version of Trello for a long time now and it's great. And as I said, I just sit down and work out my week and work out my days and I'm able to pop my my jobs into the individual lists and then the individual cards and within each cards I can take notes I can create checklists and I can liaise with my VA as well so we work off the same board and we're able to see those tasks as well so I really advise getting yourself a productivity software and if you ask me Trello is the one to go for. Number three close everything else now this one is absolutely huge now I don't know about you but on a normal day if I was to leave on all of my notifications I'd be getting notifications on my email I'd be getting notifications from my reminders on my phone from my apps and all of these reminders all of these notifications are opportunity for me to be derailed in what I'm doing. So you really need to be conscious of all of these distractions. And it's not just the distractions themselves, it's actually the the dark hole that you go into once you get distracted once. If you jump onto your email because an email notification has come up and then you read an email and that email has told you about something that you need to go and do now, well then you'll probably go and do that task. And to be honest, there have been times where I've gotten distracted by an email and all of a sudden, two hours later, I'm there doing tasks that I hadn't scheduled. And I look back and I ask myself, what have I been doing for the last two hours? So you can, if you don't control those notifications, it's not just the, the single notification, it's where that leads you as well. So make sure you turn off all those notifications and just concentrate on what you're doing. Number four, leverage momentum. Now this one for me personally is absolutely huge. Now I've been working for myself for many, many years at this point but it wasn't until about two years in that I started to realize something about myself and that's how much I rely on momentum now this can be on an hourly basis a daily basis a weekly a monthly or even a yearly basis depending what on what I'm working on but I know that once I get distracted then it can take me a long long time to recover from that period of momentum and it, it can take me a lot longer to get back into the swing of things to get back into that momentum and I know that when when I do have that momentum when I do have that win behind my back I know that I can just just keep going and get so much more done. So I really try to keep 
the distractions away from me. Now, as I said, that can be on an hourly basis, a weekly basis. And if I do see these kinds of distractions, whether it's within my personal life or whether it's within you know day-to-day -day tasks, I try to keep them at bay because I know that once I get derailed, it takes me so much longer to recover and really pick up speed again. So think about a train, it takes a, a train so, so long to really pick up that speed. And if it gets derailed, it takes all of that time to get back up to, to pick up that speed again. So for me personally, this one is huge. And when I realized how big this was for me, then I was able to, to fix that and be very conscious about it in my day-to-day -day work and my week-to-week -week and month-to-month -month work as well. So really be conscious of the role that momentum plays in your day-to-day -day operations and make sure you protect that momentum. Number five, focus on the one thing. Now, I read a book a few years ago called The One Thing by an author called Gary Keller, and it really did help me in my productivity. Now, the book itself, it does talk about the one thing focus, and it does base that one thing focus on anywhere up to five years and beyond. So really focusing on you know, a five-year timeline and asking yourself, what is the one thing that you want to achieve in that five years? And then chunking everything down to a yearly basis, to a quarterly basis, a monthly basis, a weekly basis, a daily basis. And the reality of this is that it takes a lot of discipline to be able to stay on track with that. But that's not to say that this book is not useful. It's very useful and it's really helped me in my day-to-day -day operations. Where I go with uh, as far as this book is concerned, is probably up to a monthly basis. I identify what I'd like to achieve within this month, but really where it comes into its own for me is on the weekly and the daily basis. When I know what I need to focus on and I put that right in front of me, then my sole focus is on that one thing. And that's really the key takeaway I had from that book. So when it comes to you getting your tasks done and when it comes to you scheduling and time blocking your tasks for the week, each time you do that, well then think about the one thing that you would like to get done within that week and then schedule your tasks around achieving that. Number six, stop multitasking. Now this is a follow on from the last point and this point actually came from that same book, The One Thing. And within that book, they identified that multitasking is not something that goes hand in hand with productivity because when you multitask, you actually turn your focus and split your focus between both tasks. So you don't have the same brain power on both tasks. In fact, what you're doing is you're splitting your brain power between the two. So essentially what you're doing when you're multitasking is that you're doing multiple things half arsed. So if you do want to multitask, then understand that you're not gonna have your, your total brain power on that task at hand on those multiple tasks. So it's best to just time block, just focus on that one thing and stop multitasking. Number seven, prioritize difficult tasks first. Now, I've noticed that when I do go through these periods where I don't have my momentum and I am stuck in a bit of a rut, when I sit down in the morning, I'll tend to do my easier tasks first. And then my harder tasks, I don't get started on until later on in the morning or maybe even in the afternoon. And then by the time the end of the day comes, I haven't finished those and they'll spill on into the next day. So the next day comes, I sit down, and the first thing that I have to do is to finish off that hard task from yesterday. And what happens, you have a snowball effect there that you know these harder tasks just get pushed out and out and out. But I've realized and I've learned from my mistakes that you know when, when I am in, in that phase, I need to quickly acknowledge it and start getting back on track. And the best way to do that is to start doing your harder tasks first. And then it makes the afternoon easier. Once you've done those hard tasks in the morning, you can feel better about yourself and give yourself a pat on the back and then you can work on those easier tasks. So prioritize those harder tasks first, get them done and then do the easier tasks in the afternoon. Number eight, put a timer on your email. Now for me, without a doubt, one of my biggest productivity killers is my email. And I've mentioned this already. When I get into my email, there could be any kind of task or request that could send me in any different direction. And that can end up with this pinball effect where you ju just jump from one task to the next. So if I don't keep an eye on that clock, and I know this about myself, if I don't keep an eye on that clock, then you know my whole morning will disappear. So what I do now is I break my email up into three chunks of 15 minutes. So I'll do 15 minutes in the morning, I'll do 15 minutes at lunchtime, and I'll do 15 minutes at the end of the day. And if I can actually avoid that morning 15 minutes, 
I will. If I can jump straight into my tasks and get them done, then I'll do that because I know that even though I'm keeping an eye on this clock, there are some things that I will just have to do because of that email and uh, I won't be able to work as productively because I've seen that email. So if you can avoid that morning block and jump straight into your tasks, then I advise, advise you to do that. But certainly keep an eye on that clock when it comes to your email and look at your email as a productivity killer. If you have it open and you're in there looking at emails, well then you're not doing tasks that are gonna move the needle in your business. So put a clock on that email and keep an eye on it. Number nine, incentivize yourself. Now, I'm not one for giving myself a pat on the back. I, I don't tend to do that and I certainly don't do that on a day-to-day -day basis. But I do know that if I have a, a project or a goal that I want to achieve, and you know, I say to myself that if I achieve this goal, then you know, I'm gonna do this for myself, then it does give me something to work towards. And I have done this successfully before. I don't do it all the time, I have to say, but if there's something that I really wanna get done, if there's something that I really want to achieve, well then I'll have a think about what I want and what I can reward myself with. And you know, that can help with that motivation as well. So whether you do this on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, per project ba basis, it's entirely up to yourself. But if you do put in in place an incentive for yourself it just gives you that added momentum number 10 keep your tasks varied now as a solopreneur an entrepreneur a freelancer you wear many hats and you do pretty much everything within your business so there are a variety of different tasks that you can be doing on any given day and if you back yourself up with tasks that are taxing on the brain then you know those days can be very unproductive you can get tired by the end of the day and the task that you set for the end of the day doesn't get done it spills over onto the next day so really keep in in mind the variation of tasks that you can be doing on a given day. So you might want to do some design in the afternoon and do some of that more administrative or writing work that will tax your brain a bit more. So just keep that in mind, the variation of tasks and don't back yourself up with too many tasks that are gonna to be too taxing on your brain. Number 11, take breaks and rest. Now, I used to really buy into this whole hustle culture that you know if you're not working every waking hour of the day, well then, you know, you're not gonna be moving the needle in your business and you don't want it that bad. And what I learned about that is is it had a big impact on my life. It had a big impact on you know, how productive I was, how tired I was, the time that I got to spend with my wife, with my kids. And you know, it, it really took a lot out of me. And, and I was doing that all last year. I was really grinding last year and I really did, didn't give myself any kind of break. Even at lunchtime, I'd run out, I'd grab something to eat and I'd sit back down at my desk and I'd eat at my desk. I, I didn't want any moment to be lost. If I was doing the dishes, I was listening to a podcast and I never switched off. And you know, that it's not good for you. If you continue to do, do that and burn the candle at both ends, then you're gonna burn out. So give yourself a break, Give literally give yourself a break and take those breaks that you need to take your break at lunchtime take your break in the evening and spend some time with your loved ones whether you have kids or have a wife or you know even even your 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 flatmates or or your family whatever it is take the time with them to just switch off and and you know be yourself away from everything else so you know give yourself that freedom to take those breaks and make sure you do because when you come back to your tasks you'll be a lot more productive you'll be a lot more mentally fresh. Number 12, structure your individual tasks. Now, when you're working on individual tasks, whether it's your designing, your writing, your wireframing, whatever it is, there's different levels to that and you want to make sure that you're focusing on the right level at the right time. For So for example, if you're writing, well then don't be trying to edit at the same time. Really give yourself the freedom just to get that writing out there and you can edit later on. Same with designing. When you're thumbnailing, don't try to polish everything. Don't you know, take that thumbnail and bring it onto Illustrator straight away and try and try and polish that up. If you're thumbnailing, just give yourself the time to thumbnail so you get all your ideas out. So make sure you structure your individual tasks so that you're focusing on the right level at the right time. Number 13, create standard operating procedures. Now, when I first started out freelancing, my tasks my productivity my scheduling was all over the place i just i just i was winging it every single day and when i did get a project to work on for a client i could jump onto thumbnailing i'd be on thumbnailing for 
three to four hours, I wouldn't be looking at the, the time. I'd do the same with finding inspiration for my designs. And then all of a sudden I'd be eight hours in and the budget didn't allow for it. So make sure that you document your standard operating procedures and allocate a certain amount of time for each of them and adjust that based on the budget of the project that you're working on. So when you do sit down to work on those projects, then you know what you're doing. And this goes across the board of your whole business, whether it's your design, whether it's your writing or your, your administration, if you know the task at hand, and if you know all of the steps within those tasks, well, then you can keep an eye on the time and you know you don't get sidetracked with individual tasks. You, you, you know, you're not spending longer on them than you need to. So make sure you document your tasks in an SOP. Number 14, use time management software. Now I use Toggle for all of my tasks and basically I create all of my projects within the dashboard and toggle and I have the little app sitting on my dashboard there and I just hit play when I'm working on a, a given task now the software itself records all of my tasks and I do have the added advantage of being able to report on that but personally I don't actually use that what I use the software for more is really from a psychological point of view if I know that I'm recording my tasks every day then I can look at that piece of software at the end of the day and and I can see that I worked you know eight or nine hours today I can see what tasks I accomplished during that day and it's really just peace of mind for me that you know it, it kind of keeps me on track if I'm not documenting if I haven't pressed play on that software well then I'm not doing something productive so for me it's less about the reporting side of things although if you do want that you can have that but toggle for me is the software that I use and just having that little widget on my dashboard is just a little reminder that if it's not playing then I'm not doing something productive so that's my recommendation for uh, software that can help you to manage that time and number 15 acknowledge procrastination now one of the things that I realized about myself when I realized this thing about momentum was that when I did fall into a rut, then I could be in there for days or even weeks without realizing that that's what I was doing. So what I learned to do is to acknowledge procrastination and to say to myself, listen, you're not in the right frame of mind. You're not in the right place at the moment take some time so you know if you can get out for a walk into the national park or you know just go and do something go and exert energy go to the gym go for a walk go for a swim just do something and just acknowledge the fact that at this point in time you're not at your best and you need to just switch your mindset and the next day you come to work you sit down and you keep that top of mind that you've been in this rut and you need to get out of it so acknowledging that pr procrastination and, and realizing that you're in a rut is a great way to get out of it now look we're all different we we all work in our own individual way and some of these techniques that I've listed here will work perfectly for you some of them might be the exact technique that you've been looking for but some probably won't because as I said we're all individuals and we all work in different ways but the important thing to remember when it comes to productivity is that it's all about managing obstacles there are obstacles that are thrown in your way every single day that are keeping you from your tasks and keeping you from getting the needle moving in your business and the better you can identify what those obstacles are the better you can become at removing those obstacles and that's what productivity management is all about at the end of the day but I'd love to hear from you what is the number one killer of productivity within your business I guarantee you that if you put it in the comment box below then other people will have the same one or what is your biggest challenge what would you like to overcome when it comes to your productivity if you've got any questions or challenges at all in relation to productivity or time management let me know in the comments below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and hit that notification bell if you like tips like this and techniques like this well then head on over to brandmasteracademy.com and sign up for the newsletter it is free and i keep some exclusive tips for my list so get yourself signed up but let me know as i said in the comments below your experience on time management and productivity and as i said if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button until the next time brand like a master and i will see you in the next video